so far we have discussed what is a series of complex numbers and different criteria for checking uh, the convergence or divergence of a given series of complex numbers it included for example comparison test ratio test and other criteria now in this discussion we are going to discuss one very powerful test for checking the convergence of a given series so it is known as the root test the root test is more powerful than the ratio test but it involves understanding a sophisticated concept known as the limit supremum or just commonly known as the lim sup so in this discussion we will just focus on this concept of lim sup and in the next discussion we will see what is the root test and how to apply this root test to check the convergence now to understand this concept of lim sup let's consider a sequence uh, the sequence is given as 0.5 1.5 0.05 1.05 and up to so on now we can all observe that what is the pattern for deciding the next terms of this of the sequence so it starts from 0.5 okay so let's say this is the origin and let's say this is uh, uh, 1 and let's say this is 1.5 and this is 0.5 now what are uh, the terms of the uh, sequence so it starts from 0.5 and then it goes to 1.5 this is the second term and then it goes to 0 0.05 so kind of close to this uh, origin okay, so 0 0.05 so this is the third term and then uh, it goes to 1.05 so kind of close to 1 to 1.05 and this is the fourth term and the fifth term is going to be 0 0.005 so kind of more close to uh, 1 to 0 0.005 so this is the fifth term and the sixth term is going to be uh, over here so 1.005 now uh, the point is we can move on and on and uh, the terms of the sequence will be oscillating between the uh, the points near origin and points near 1 and uh, since uh, the terms are oscillating between 0 and 1 uh, one thing is very clear that this sequence is not going to converge to one fixed number so the sequence is divergent so uh, we cannot calculate the limit in this case but what we can do is we can calculate uh, the limit supremum or the limb sup of this sequence okay so this is one important uh, uh, thing about this limb sup even if the sequence is convergent we can always calculate this limb sup so that's why we are uh, using this concept to define what is root test now let's observe uh, the pattern of these things again so roughly speaking we can say that the sequence is not converging to one point in fact it is kind of uh, converging to two points okay uh, one point is the origin zero and the second point is one okay so and uh, uh, since we are talking about the supremum over here so which number is the bigger zero or one so it is going to be equal to one so roughly speaking uh, uh, intuitively we can say that this one is going to be equal to the limit supremum of given sequence okay so uh, in fact uh, this zero and this one so these are uh, accumulation points or the limit points of this sequence okay so we have seen what is accumulation point of a given set okay so uh, just recall what is accumulation point so if s is a set then z is basically or z naught is basically accumulation point if every deleted neighborhood of z naught contains at least one point of s if every deleted neighborhood of z naught contains at least one point of s now in this case our s is basically this set a and uh, the points are basically 0 and 1 okay so let's see why 0 and 1 are accumulation points of this set a okay so we can we can see that if whenever we take a deleted neighborhood of 0 there will be many many points of this a in this uh, neighborhood similarly whenever we take a deleted neighborhood of 1 uh, there will be many many points of this set uh, in this interval so we can say that this 0 at 1 are limit points or accumulation points of this set a and uh, uh, in the set of uh, all accumulation points or limit points which is 0 1 what is the supremum uh, of this thing so the supremum 
of uh, this set is equal to 1 and that's why this 1 is basically the limb sub of this sequence. Now, let's see how to define this thing more precisely. Okay. Now, we want to define limb sub of any given sequence in a more precise way. So, let's again discuss the pattern of the terms. So, it starts from 0.5 and goes to 1.5 and then it goes to 0 0.05 and then it goes to uh, 1.05 and up to so on. Now, how do we uh, find a criteria that tells us that this one is basically the limb sub of this sequence? Now, what is so special about uh, this one? Okay, so as we move move on with the terms of the sequence, then we are getting closer and closer to this one. Okay, and uh, uh, this uh, another way of saying that if I if I choose a number which is bigger than one, then there are only finitely many terms over here. Okay, so finitely many terms. And uh, what is this uh, distance? Let's say this distance is basically epsilon. So this number is one plus epsilon. And this is true for any epsilon. So for example, if I take another value of the epsilon, let's say this one, and let's say this is one plus epsilon prime, then there will be finitely many terms in this side. Okay, so finitely many terms. Because eventually the terms of the series are getting closer, of this sequence, sorry, are getting closer and closer to 1. And uh, whenever we choose a distance uh, away from 1 or a, any number bigger than 1, then on the left of this number, there are always going to be finitely many terms and infinitely many terms are going to be, equal, uh, are going to be inside this interval. So that's uh, one criteria and which is very useful criteria for defining the limb soup. Okay. Now let's define limb soup in a precise way. Given a sequence of uh, uh, real numbers. Okay. So remember we are going to define it for uh, uh, real numbers and in particular we are only interested in the positive real numbers. So that's why we are going to discuss it for only positive real numbers. The limb soup uh, of this sequence is denoted as uh, limb soup and uh, limit so there is n approaches to infinity uh, beneath this limit. So limit n approaches to infinity sub t n, and it is uh, we read it as lim sub n approaches to infinity of t n. Okay. Now this is equal to l. Okay. So this lim sub is the smallest real number l, having the property that for any epsilon there are at most finitely many terms in the sequence that are larger than L plus epsilon. Okay. So this L is basically the limb soup of the sequence. If we take an epsilon, okay, so for this epsilon, so there are always going to be finitely many terms larger than L plus epsilon. So this is basically L plus epsilon. So they are going to be finitely many terms over here. And then there is one extra condition. It is the smallest real number L with this property. Okay, so we want to make sure that it is the smallest one. And of course, uh, uh, it is uh, also related to the word of supremum as well, which is the, uh, the, the smallest upper bound of a given set. But uh, over here, we want to make sure that this number L is the smallest with this property. So that's how we define limb sup of a set and of course if we cannot find such l then we say that the limb sup of that sequence is equal to infinity now uh, let's consider this uh, sequence uh, we can see that this sequence is divergent because uh, it oscillates between 1 2 3 so 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 up to so on so the terms of the sequence if we plot them it's a real sequence so if we plot them uh, in this uh, plane so the terms are going to be equal to so if this is 1 this is 2 if this is 3 and if we choose a very uh, small unit on this uh, x-axis 
then the terms are going to be equal to 1 2 3 and then 1 2 3 1 2 3 2 3 3 and up to so on now we can see that uh, this sequence is definitely divergent because it is oscillating between the three numbers but we can calculate the limb soup in this case now let's see what is going to be the limb soup in this case now it it should be the smallest number such that whenever we add epsilon to that then there are always finitely many terms bigger than l plus epsilon now what is that l in this case so is it going to be one okay question mark so if we, if we take one plus epsilon okay so uh, remember that this epsilon is arbitrary okay and it should satisfy this condition for every epsilon so if we take this epsilon then there are not finitely many terms bigger than one plus epsilon in fact they are going to be infinitely many terms so we can say that this one is not the limb soup similarly two is not going to be the limb soup what about three okay now uh, let's see is three limb soup of this sequence because whenever we take an epsilon okay greater than one then there are always going to be finitely many terms bigger than t plus epsilon when uh, well in this case they are going to be none so there is no term bigger than three plus epsilon so the condition that there are only finitely many terms bigger than three plus epsilon is satisfied in this case so we can say that limb soup n approaches to infinity of this sequence tn is equal to 3. Now once again this example is important to remind ourselves that uh, given a sequence we cannot calculate its limit because it is not a convergent sequence but still we can calculate its limb soup and this is going to help us in calculating uh, and uh, in defining the root test which will involve the limb soup and uh, which says that uh, and which will reduce uh, the condition that some limit should exist because uh, we will be using the limb soup which always exists now let's consider uh, this uh, sequence 1 2 3 4 5 6 up to so on and uh, if we plot this sequence the terms are going to be equal to 1 2 3 4 5 6 up to so on so the terms are going in this direction okay now we can see that uh, it is hard to find limb soup in this case because if we take any number to be okay so let's say this is the limb soup but then uh, bigger than this number there are always going to be infinitely many numbers of this sequence so we can say that the limb soup in this case does not exist or in other words limb soup of this sequence tn is equal to infinity now let's see what is the relationship between uh, the limb soup and the limit of a sequence now how do we define limit of a sequence now uh, given a sequence okay uh, let's say tn and if we plot its terms uh, like here then uh, what is the limit okay so over here we can observe that this is the limit of the sequence and uh, let's just recall ourselves how do we define the limit of a sequence so the limit is 0.5 if we take any epsilon so over here you can see that these bars are defining this epsilon so for any epsilon there are we can find uh, terms of the sequence finitely many terms which are outside this bar okay so over here uh, whatever epsilon you choose they are always going to be finitely many terms finitely many terms outside this bar so for every epsilon there are always going to be finitely many terms outside these bars okay and of course this number is 0 0.5 plus epsilon okay and uh, uh, if we uh, if we observe closely that then this 0 0.5 satisfies the condition of limb soup because in limb soup we impose the condition that there are always for every epsilon of course for every epsilon there are always finitely many terms bigger than 0 0.5 plus epsilon and it satisfies this condition because uh, over here instead of uh, uh, instead of imposing the condition that there are only finitely many elements bigger than 0 0.5 plus epsilon we are also imposing the condition that all of the terms lies inside these two bars okay so this is much strong condition on the terms of the sequence 
so if uh, the limit of the sequence is equal to m then we can say that the limb soup is also equal to m so that's the relationship between the limit of a sequence and the limb soup of any sequence so in this discussion we observed and we defined what is limb soup of a given sequence and most importantly the relationship between the limb soup of a sequence and the limit of any sequence and uh, the importance of this limb soup is that we can calculate this limb soup for any sequence whether the sequence is convergent or whether it is divergent it is always going to give us some finite number or infinity if it doesn't exist